I think my computer went on sleep, so you might not see anything yet. Okay. Yay. How are you? Did you have a great conference? <laughs> Yay. Are you tired? <laughs> no, good, it's good, it's good, good to hear that, good. So thank you for, for uh, coming to my talk here. And I'm so eager to show you how excited I am for web components and for the UI5 web components. And hopefully you're gonna learn something today from my talk, of course. So hello there, uh, my name is Ramona Buscovanu. I'm a developer at SAP. And you can find me on social media, I like to say on important social media, like Twitter and GitHub with uh, Codes of Ra. And you can take pictures, so I'm gonna share them with my mom, so tag me there, because you know, she wants to see pictures. Um, I was saying that I'm very excited to share with you about web components and, uh, and Vue, because there are quite two topics that I really like, especially components. Since last year, my colleagues at work have to deal with me speaking all the time about components and Vue. Um, so what I'm gonna try to cover uh, today, I'll try to make a slightly small uh, introduction into what are web components, why you should use them, and why you should consider maybe using them. We'll take a look into the UI5 web components, and we'll switch to how see how uh, view and web components um, tied very well together. But before that, what are web components? I'm pretty sure you might know already by now, but just out of curiosity, how many of you tried to work with web components or you build one of them? Ooh, this is exciting. Or with Vue? Okay, so I'm gonna like this talk. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like to think of web components as, um, as a web standard because after all it is a standard. And um, this is allowing us to make the DOM more composable and bring it more in line with frameworks like Vue, React that are more component based. And that's gonna make the, the, the DOM natively have that uh, functionality. And I think that's exciting because honestly, I love component designs and how to build applications like that. So that's exciting times coming up a lot, uh, along for us. But web components are um, a bunch of technologies that come together. You can use them separately or together and build components. And as you can see here, there are like custom elements, shadow DOM, HTML templates, and uh, HTML imports. I'm just gonna go slightly through them, just you know, for us to have, for everyone to have the same knowledge and understanding when we then when we jump into UI5 components to understand what's in there. So custom elements, I like to call this one. If you ever had a dream to build your HTML uh, tag, this is your time. As you can see, I put my name in there because I'm seven years old and I like to have my own button. So what you can do with this, you can extend existing uh, elements and bring them new uh, functionality, or you can uh, create your new ones, as I did here. It's just, it's a very silly example, but you can try it out in ConSandbox, I put the URL here. And then the picture down there is like how it looks um, when you look in the developer tools and how it looks in the DOM tree. So it's kind of cool, right? You can create your own tags. Uh, then what's the shadow DOM? This is something very exciting because you know HTML and CSS by default it's leaky all over the place. So this way helps you to encapsulate styles and create kind of like a new DOM tree for your component that's not gonna be leaky everywhere. And uh, you'll see there in the picture how it looks. You'll get like you know the, the, the tree, like the shadow root, and you can do lots of other bunch of things. And then on the HTML templates, if you ever worked with Vue, you, might, you may have seen them there. Uh, these are not rendered at the load time, so you kind of have specifically to say when they have to, to be loaded in the, in the DOM tree. And uh, again, a very silly example, because why not? Uh, here I have a button, and then when you click on the button, it appends a new uh, thing into the DOM, which is a new span element, uh, element with uh, the word world. And then in the HTML imports, actually I'm very excited about this because it's easy like that to import your components. So you, you'll write your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in one file, and then you just import your component in, 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 in your main file or something, and you'll, it'll be like that. But still a long way to go here, so don't get too excited. But you may wonder why, like, why should you use web components, right? Because there are one million things out there. And I like to think, you know, 
Have you ever tried to scrub Facebook or, I don't know, Gmail? You may have seen there are like one million divs out there, and it's very, very hard to find any of the information. And one of the things with the op components we can fix this is readability, because after all, we build software for human beings and for other developers, and our applications have to be maintainable. So instead of going like one million divs in there and find the information and see what actually is in there, you just have like, I don't know, a name that says that's a nav bar or that's a subject title or something like that. And because it's a browser standard, I don't know about you, but I love standards because that's gonna, you know, force the browser to support um, the APIs for, for us and make our life easier as developers. So they don't do that all the time, but at least we can hope about that. Um, reusability, just think of that. You don't have to create a date picker every single time, you just have to reuse it. And every time that thing gets changed or updated, it gets updated in every single application that you are using it. And about the developer experience, and I think this one ties a lot with the component-based um, way of developing user interfaces. Um, but you say, you know, it's everything pink and uh, rainbows and unicorns. Uh, this is the current um, support in the browser for custom elements in Shadow DOM. You see there's lots of red still out there. I think some of the, uh, the squares are actually wrong. Some of them are supported. And um, custom elements in Shadow DOM and any of these are not supported in Internet Explorer, so I'm very sorry for you if you have to support that. Usually I'm very sorry for people that have to support Internet Explorer. And then uh, HTML templates, and as you can see, my favorite ones, HTML imports are not doing well there, so that's it, that's life. But don't worry, there are polyfill outs there that can help you if you want to build your own web components and you want to make them maintainable everywhere. So I link them here, so if you want to have a read, they're quite, quite good and amazing. And again, if you want to read more information about um, web components in general, or for look of other web components, you can go to webcomponents.org. UI5 components are not there yet, so maybe we can add them. You know, it would be nice to have them on that list. And what about the UI5 web components? I think one of the main pluses here is that we can have Fiori tree design in any type of framework. So what? This is a way we can achieve this. They are very easy to use. They have a very clean uh, API, and it's actually very, very easy to, to get along with them. And accessibility, like it works. At least the UI5 team has to take care of that, so we don't have to worry about all this. Um, they're still, I guess, underdeveloped, and they'll have more and more components coming up, so I'm really looking forward to see more and more of these. And we're gonna move to Vue. I know the re whole rhetoric around web components is that uh, you can, it's like this, this solution that's gonna come and save us from using frameworks. I don't believe in that, and I think that these two words, web components and frameworks, can get along because, you know, you're not going to write your router every time you want to build a more complex application, so that's why we have frameworks out there to, to help us. And I think Vue is a very, uh, very good choice when we have to work with web components, let's say in bigger applications where vanilla JavaScript can't help us there. But you'll wonder, like, again, like, why? Is, do I have to use Vue, or like, why is this a solution for me? So one of the things, and I put stars there because, you know, why not, is the magic reactivity. It just works for you. Like, 99% of the times, you don't have to be even worried, like, what's reactivity and how the VDOM works in Vue, because Vue is developed as other frameworks, like React and Angular, it works with the uh, virtual DOM. And um, it's also like very low complexity, so you don't have, actually, just reading the docs, you can get along with it. And uh, it ties very well with very beginner friendly. If you did only just basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's very, very easy for you to start and build your first component in Vue. And one of the things that is very important for me, it has an amazing community, and this is very important for me. Um, if you have any questions, or even like the silliest ever in the world, people are gonna be very nice with you, and they're gonna reply very, very nice to you. And also, they have lots of articles out there that can help you with more complex scenarios. And also, 
it's it's amazing that the core team of you it's uh, handling all this for us. You know, sometimes when you develop applications and you don't know what library is best, and you spend lots of time in research and prototyping, and then you move things to production, and you're like, oh yeah, this router is not bad. Look, someone else on Twitter said this one is better. Vue core team is actually handling this for us. They are having the Vue router. They have their own state library, Vuex, and also the test utils for testing. So one worry from us, it's gone. And you'll wonder, okay, well, you didn't say anything about web components. Like, that's just marketing for Vue. If you look on custom elements everywhere, Vue is scoring 100% on working with the web components. And I guess you can't go like more than 100%. So I guess that could be a very good choice because it works almost the same as any other Vue uh, component. And I have a very silly demo for you now. Because when you open UI5 web components website, it's saying they're enterprise ready. I built a uh, cat Tinder because, you know, it's very enterprise. So how it works, as you know, you build like and unlike lists. So, oh yeah, and if you don't know, there's a cat API on the internet and also dog one. So I'm not going to like this one because just for the demo, you know. And uh, I'm using here the shell bar in the and the header here and two buttons, uh, UI5 web component buttons. And then here I'm using the card and some, um, I have some action on the card on the list items. And then I here I'm displaying more information like badges and stuff. And here I've created my own uh, rating component using UI5 web components like stars, depending on how grades these cats have. See, I think this one was a good choice to go and don't like. Just look at the energy level, so it's a very lazy cat. Okay, so if I move out of the demo, we'll switch into a very quick, quick intro into view and how it works. Maybe some of you don't have experience with it. It has amazing um, developer tools. So if you want to build your uh, your first ever project, you just have to install your CLI, the view CLI and just run a uh, view create project, and that's going to create your first uh, view project with a very hello world uh, component. And it has this amazing thing that is it's called single file components. You build uh, your component in one single file. So you have the template, and then you have the script, and then you have your uh, styling, same in the same file for the same component. Just think of it like if it's a button, you have your, your button in a template, and then your styling, and then the actions for the button. But what about UI5 web components in Vue, right? Of course, in your project, you have to install UI5 web components. And then you have to do this uh, setting in your mail main file, because you have to tell to Vue, see, this is not a Vue component. Just ignore it, and don't yell at me when you can't compile it. And I linked there to if you want to read more about uh, ignore elements in. But if you forget to do that, don't worry. I'm here to save you. I built a Vue CLI plugin for you, for UI5 web components. So all you have to do is you do view add UI5 web components in your application. And this is going to install UI5 uh, web components in your project. And it's going to do the setting for ignore elements for you. And also, um, it prompts you a question if you want to generate an example component. So if you press on yes, it's just going to generate an example. And this is very good if you are new to web components or new to Vue and working with both of them. Um, I'm doing there bits of like bindings and event handling. So if you don't know exactly how to start, it, it could be a very good um, start. And if you have ideas about this, please reach out. I'm uh, very happy to improve this and bring more features to the, to the plugin. But how do you use them? How do you use them in a view component? You have to import them in your uh, script tag, right, in the, strip, in the JavaScript uh, part of your component. And then you just use them as any HTML tag in your application. You, for example, for the shell bar here, you're just uh, writing UI5 shell bar, and then uh, you bind the um, your uh, component data to UI5 web components attributes. And the title here, it's just the data coming from my uh, web component, from my component from view. And this is just the way how you can bind data. Looking at events, because you know, button have, buttons have events, doing the same thing, importing the button, then uh, I'm using the button and I'm passing an event, you'll see there on the add click 
on like. So what I'm doing on the on like uh, event, I'm just emitting the the event to, uh, to the parent, which is my application uh, to handle and do do that to me. Okay, so. All these are uh, view directives, and if you ever worked with Angular, you might be familiar with this. For logical expression, if you want to make something to disappear or appear on whatever things you want, it works by default in web components as in um, any other things in uh, view. Also for looping, v4 works, and v on and v bind, as show them uh, here, like binding the elements and uh, the events. But the V model, which is for input elements, is not working amazingly right now for um, for web components. But um, it's actually a RFC open for Vue 3, which is going to be improved. I linked in here if you want to read. It's going to be amazing support for this. And I have here some resources for you if you want to if you want to spend more time in reading all about this. Web component news. It's an amazing uh, newsletter, monthly newsletter. So you can. Um, get your information about them in your inbox. And then if you just want to learn about Vue, the docs are amazing and are great to start with. And here's a, n another list of more advanced um, topics when working with Vue. But before uh, ending this, I want to show you uh, one more thing. I'm running my application here locally. And um, I want to show you the developer tools. OK, let me make it smaller. One downside of using the both of, yeah, like, I like to call them words, you know, uh, view components and web components, is that they're not going to appear here, so you're not going to see them. You're not going to see that here you used a UI5 uh, button. So this could be an issue sometimes, because, for example, for me, at the beginning was just a learning curve. I had to kind of learn, it's not there. And another thing is, for example, when I click on this button, I get my event trigger here, right? But I get my event that is triggered from the bottom group, so the com view component where I actually wrapped my web component into. Because for example, if I click on here on this, ac on this um, list, I got an event trigger, right? But I'm not going to have it here in my uh, view um, developer tools. This could be a downside depending on, on much on your workflow and how you would debug applications. But I guess it's just a learning curve and in the end, uh, you can uh, get used to it because I got used to it. Some people like to do this. Uh, they like to wrap the web components into view components and just pass the attributes that they are using. And then they are reactive by default. And uh, they can also debug and see all the, the attributes in here. Because if I go back here, you'll see on my button, um, I don't have any. But for example, here you can see the data and, uh, and everything. And this is all for my, uh, from, from me. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me.